Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about weaknesses in the interviewing stage. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, is it okay to tell my interviewer my weaknesses during the interviewing phase? I used to work in a project where we were using a lot of outdated tools and I wanted to stress that I felt very uncomfortable using all of these tools and I wanted to move our tools strategy, our tooling to a more modern stack and I felt that it was really frustrating when nobody wanted to hear me out and I wanted to fix bugs but that, did, uh, uh, but that didn't work, e work either because take, making money was more important than fixing bugs it, frustrated, uh, it was very frustrating to me and I, feel like it, I felt like they were trying to force me to do things in a way I didn't want to is it okay to, for me to talk about these things? so the the sad fact here, my friend, is that I can't really answer this question for you at an individual level because I don't know what level of expectations you have on the work that you do. So I talk to a lot of idealistic developers. I even work with one right now who has a... He reminds, my, he reminds me of myself a few years back where I really did believe that all the people around me were just kind of old and stuck in the mud and they didn't really like i mean they were really really good at software development they just didn't care anymore and i felt that that enthusiasm that i could bring to the table and like push for things maybe that was my role in this whole equation and that's where i'm dealing with right now and it feels like looking back at myself and i realize holy shit i was off off the mark um because the thing about being an idealistic person is that you get so caught up in idealism that you forget why you're in the company. And once you become one of those very boring, pragmatic people, like I would like to believe that I have started becoming, you will start to, re you will start to understand why this idealism will never hold. I had a discussion the other day with my uh, one of my coworkers who where he was saying that he wanted to have more spontane he wanted more spontaneous uh, and creative uh, forums for our team members so that we could like just shoot ideas and spawn ideas and just come up with new awesome stuff and everybody in the team just kind of looked at him and asked okay well what type of what would you like should we have like a meeting or something no 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 and then he kind of just laughed at us chuckled and said well, you can't schedule creativity and so everybody just sat there and I voiced my voiced my thought and I asked so you want to be more spontaneous and have cool ideas you but you don't have any right now at least because I would like to think that we are a very open forum because we are like in the team we are very, like we are clo we are very close uh, you can literally whenever just post something to slack and he interrupts me and says well uh, well slack <laughs> frederick <laughs> you can't like just have a like a really good go back and forth on, a, on an instant messaging system and i keep my keep my cool and i just explain well dude uh, I'm not saying that you have to have a full-fledged conversation or a brainstorming session on Slack. I'm just saying that if somebody has an idea or some conversation that leads to an inspiration, you can post that and say, hey guys, would you be interested in talking about this in some type of meeting? That was still not what he was looking for. He wanted a more freeform thing. And I said, all right, well, then I can only surmise like if we can't have a meeting and it's not possible to do during like the everyday work, then the only thing that remains is that we have lunch together or we do after works that's about it and finally i think i think i honest to god i still think that he didn't really know himself like, i think he had more emotions than he had ideas because he could like we kind of just landed in that that's probably the closest thing to what he wants or maybe he just couldn't express it but what i want you to understand is that all of these ideas like all of this stuff is it's sure it it's inspiring to see somebody who has all of this energy and wants to do things but if you don't possess the ability to understand what's going to lead to productive results and what's always going to be a 
I'm not saying a waste, but it's going to be primarily a waste. Or if you don't know if you, how to sell your ideas or how to implement something, if you can't con make something concrete enough that other people understand the value of what you, what you want to suggest, then it's never going to happen. And it's the same thing here. It's fine to be annoyed about not having uh, about having a lot of bugs and never being able to prioritize things as long as you keep a level head about the whole thing so if you're talking to this interviewer it's perfectly fine if like they if they ask your weaknesses be transparent about it but remember how you communicate is a very important factor in how the whole thing comes off so being transparent about for example that you feel that's very it's very frustrating to never get to fix bugs or have working on a legacy system a legacy system like dude i can promise you that hiring interviewing person hr person they have most likely heard that a hundred thousand times at least because it's the most common complaint that developers have when they move from one company to another like the system is shitty everybody has a shitty system so saying that is absolutely fine but if you, you you really have to know yourself there but if you are communicating on the other hand that you will cause a real fucking problem or like kick up a fuss and not actually be diplomatic and understand that there's a given and a taken a taking and that most of what you do when it comes to software development is to figure out the best possible solution given the current restrictions. If you don't understand how to be a diplomat in this scenario, that's not going to work in your favor. Nobody is going, I mean, um, with my specific coworker, that was the main concern. And I can see, I mean, I was completely right, and my CTO was completely right about the red flag, because he showed this as a red flag during the interviewing stage. He was, ex and he still is, he is extremely passionate, but he's a complete idealist, and that's not going to work. He's never, like, if you give him full, uh, he will bankrupt the company in like without without any problems if he gets to do exactly as he wants or he's going to frustrate and he has already happened it has happened a few times we've already been put in a situation where a lot of other developers have actually been a little bit frustrated with uh, all the tension that b gets um, built because he will simply not accept that his idealistic mindset isn't a good fit nobody like uh, it, 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 nobody, people are not buying into his ideas and that's very frustrating when you have all these ideas so what you have to learn is how to communicate and also at the same time learn that maybe not every single thing that you want is going to be perfect figure out what's going to work and what's not going to work because idealism although it's great needs to fi have a an application because otherwise it's just it, it, it's, it's, it doesn't have any value so what I want you to take away from this is that you can absolutely talk about your weaknesses and frustrations and so forth in the interviewing stage ideally you want to keep things on a positive note but a lot of interviewers will ask you what are your weaknesses and you can be transparent about this sort of stuff within reason of course I mean don't don't go depressed or get depressed uh, or stuff like that in the interviewing stage. Just be transparent about it. And explain in an adult fashion, a mature, professional way that you have a passion, in this case, for having a high quality system. It's something that you care deeply about. And be transparent about that. That's not, not nothing weird. But also remember that you're going to have a really bad time in software engineering if you are or if you are the sort of person who who just be behaves like a seller because I can promise you this you know Uncle Bob and Martin Fowler and all these guys that you see on the stage they are that's the only place they can get any traction of most of those ideas in the real world most people don't do copy paste exactly what they do what they say it's an idealistic proposition that they are making to you and if you believe that anything that is not what uh, Google's tech talks or like what like all this stuff that they are going on about if you believe that anything below that is bad you're gonna have a bad time you're gonna have a really bad time in software engineering because most people are not fully adopting the cut most cutting edge bleeding edge ideas as they are they adjust those ideas 
to something that's going to work for their specific situation. And that is the, pragmati uh, the pragmatism of IT. And that's something that's not going to go away, ever. Have a great day.